The Russo-Persian War of 1826-28 was the last major military conflict between the Russian and Persian empires. After the Treaty of Gulistan concluded the previous Russo-Persian War in 1813, peace reigned in the Caucasus for 13 years. However, Fath Ali Shah, constantly in need of foreign subsidies, relied on the advice of British agents, who pressed him to reconquer the territories lost to Russia and pledged their support for military action. The matter was decided upon in spring 1826, when a bellicose party of Abbas Mirza prevailed in Tehran and the Russian minister, Alexander Sergeyevich Menshikov, was placed under house arrest. The war ended in 1828 at the occupation of Tabriz. The war had ended even more disastrously for Persia as compared to the 1804-1813 war, as by now, with the ensuing Treaty of Turkmenche. Persia had been stripped off of its last remaining territories in the Caucasus, comprising all of modern-day Armenia, as well as the remainder of the territory of what is nowadays Azerbaijan and IGDIR. Thus, by now, through the Gulistan and Turkmenche treaties, Persia had irrevocably lost all its integral territories in Transcaucasia and parts of the North Caucasus, comprising eastern Georgia, Dagestan, Armenia, and the Azerbaijan Republic to neighboring Imperial Russia. The war marked the end of the era of the Russo-Persian Wars, with Russia now being the absolute and unquestionable dominant power in the Caucasus. Persia was forced to irrevocably cede swaths of its territories, which would forever be lost. The conquered territories now went for about 180 years through a Russian-dominated era, except Dagestan, which remained a Russian possession ever since. In 1991, through the dissolution of the USSR, out of the bulk of the territories the modern states of Georgia, Azerbaijan, and Armenia would be established. Lastly and equally important, as a direct result of the two Russo-Persian wars of the 19th century and Russia's imposing of the Gulistan and Turkmenche treaties, the Azerbaijanis and Talish people are ever since parted between two nations. 1826, Persian Invasion and Russian Response In May 1826, Mirak was occupied by Russian troops, against the wishes of Tsar Nicholas I. In response, the Persian government sent Mirza Muhammad Sadiq to St. Petersburg in an attempt to discuss the issue. However, Caucasus General Governor Alexei Yermolov had Sadiq detained at Tiflis. Without a declaration of war, on 19 July 1826, all dates old style. So add 12 days for the Western calendar, Abbas Mirza and 35,000 men invaded Karabakh and Talish and did a good deal of damage. The local Khan switched sides. Bombik and Shuragal, near Gamri, were overrun from Yerevan. Gamri was blockaded but the garrison managed to escape. 1,000 men surrendered at Akkarache, location. Shusha, the capital of Karabakh, was besieged. Lenkaran and Ganja abandoned, and Baku besieged. Yermo Love remained strangely inactive, partly because he had only 35,000 men. He asked for more, Nicholas sent one division and six regiments of Don Cossack cavalry and told Yermolov to invade the Yerevan Khanate. Yermolov replied that this was impossible and Nicholas replied by sending out Ivan Paskvich. This roused Yermolov who sent Valerian Maditov south with instructions not to risk a major battle. Matadov disobeyed and on 2 September he and 2,000 men defeated 10,000 Persians and relieved the siege of Shusha. The Russians re-entered Ganja. The reinforcements arrived, as did Paskvich who took command of the army from Yermolov. On 14 September he routed an estimated 60,000 Persians on the Akstafa River 18 miles west of Ganja. 1827 Russian counter-invasion and victory. Yermolov's position was now untenable and on 28 March 1827 he turned over all his powers to Paskvich. 
In April 1827, or earlier, Ben Kendorf occupied without resistance the monastery of Ekmiadzin, the Armenian, Rome, and then invested Yerevan. Paskvich joined him on 15 June. Finding Ben Kendorf's men exhausted he replaced him with fresh troops under Krasovsky and set off south for Nakhichevan, the capital of that Khanate. His purpose was to threaten Abyss Mirza's capital of Tabriz and block any relief of Yerevan from that direction. He entered Nakhichevan unopposed on 26 June and the Khanate became a Russian province. Sickness broke out and the supply convoys were late, so Paskvich did not push on to Tabriz. Meanwhile, on 21 June, Krasovsky was forced to raise the siege of Yerevan due to the condition of his troops. He left one regiment at Ekmiadzin and retired further north. At this point Abbas Mirza struck. His plan was to bypass Paskvich on the west and take Ekmiadzin and Gayumri, devastate Tiflis and return through Karabakh. Krasovsky was forced to return south to relieve Ekmiadzin. He had 1,800 infantry, 500 cavalry and 12 guns. The distance was only 33 kilometers but the terrain was difficult. The heat was terrible and 30,000 Persians blocked the way. At the Battle of Ashtarik the Russians cut their way through and relieved Ekmiadzin at the cost of half their number. The Persians withdrew south with a loss of only 400 men. It is said that if Krasovsi had not garrisoned the monastery, he could have met Abbas Mirza on ground of his own choosing. But the thing was done and it worked. When word reached Paskvich he abandoned any plans to move south and return to Ekmiadzin. Moving east he captured the fort of Serdar Abad and on 23 September appeared before the walls of Yerevan. Much of the siege work was directed by Pushchin, a former engineer officer who had been reduced to the ranks for involvement with the Decembrists. When the place fell he was promoted to non-commissioned officer. Yerevan fell on 2 October. 4,000 prisoners and 49 guns were taken and the Yerevan Khanate became a Russian province. When Pashkevich left Nakhichevan he entrusted the area to Prince Aristiv, a Georgian, with Muraviev as his lieutenant. He gave them strict instructions to merely guard the province and make no aggressive move. Abbas Mirza did the obvious thing. Crossing the Eris unopposed he found himself facing Aristiv with 4,000 men and 26 guns, far more than he expected. Abbas withdrew. Aristiv chased him for a while and returned to Nakhichevan. So far they were within their orders. When they heard that the Persian army was in a state of complete demoralization the temptation was too great. Setting off on 30 September they reached a place called Maraud. Abbas got behind them. But when news of the fall of Yerevan reached them the Persian army was seized with panic and dispersed. Muraviev now chose to be bold or foolish. Concealing his plans from everyone including Aristiv he left Maraud on the 11th of October and headed south. By the 13th of October they were a few miles from Tabriz. The garrison fled, driven out, it is said, by the inhabitants. The gates were opened and the ancient and wealthy city of 60,000 inhabitants was occupied without opposition. On 19 October Paskvich entered Tabriz with 15,000 men. Peace negotiations began immediately, but dragged on. Fighting resumed in January but the Persian army was too demoralized to fight. Ermia was occupied and Ardabil opened its gates. The Treaty of Turkmenche was signed on 10 February 1828 giving the two Armenian Khanates of Yerevan and Nikichevan to Russia. On 20 March 1828 Paskvich learned that Russia was now at war with Turkey. Aftermath by the Turkmenche Treaty, Russia completed the conquering of all Caucasian territories from Iran, having previously gained Georgia, Dagestan, and most of contemporary Azerbaijan through the 1813 Treaty of Gulistan. According to the terms of this treaty, the Khanates of Erevan and Nikichevan passed to Russia, encompassing modern-day Armenia, and the remaining part of the contemporary Azerbaijan Republic that still remained in Iranian hands, as well as a small part of eastern Anatolia, namely IGDIR. 
the Shah promised to pay an indemnity of 20 million silver rubles and allowed his Armenian subjects to migrate to Russian territory without any hindrance. This were to cause significant demographic shifts in the Caucasus as well as within the newly established borders of Iran, especially as the effects were combined with the Treaty of Adrianople of a year later. More importantly, the Shah granted the Russians the exclusive right to maintain a navy in the Caspian and agreed that Russian merchants were free to trade anywhere they wanted in Persia. In the short term, the treaty undermined the dominant position of the British Empire in Persia and marked a new stage in the great game between the empires. In the long term, the treaty ensured the dependence of the Caucasus on Russia, thus making possible the eventual emergence of the modern states of Armenia and Azerbaijan on the territories conquered from Iran during the war, as well as the direct reason in combination with the 1813 Galistan Treaty for the decisive partition of the Azerbaijani and Talish people between nowadays Iran and Azerbaijan.